You ready? Welcome back to Fabrication 101. It's great to have you guys back in the shop. Uh, do me a favor, hit that like, subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, we're back working on the back of the Bronco. I'm uh, going to take care of something I've been meaning to do for a bit. Uh, ever since I put my uh, air, ARB air compressor in the front, uh, I've been meaning to add additional air storage uh, to the back of the Bronco. Uh, and so I want what I want to do is I've got a old uh, semi-truck air tank, uh, and I'm gonna have to shorten it because it's gonna be a little too long, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and mount it, uh, I think right up back here behind the rear axle up underneath the floor. Uh, I think it's a good place for it. Uh, the first thing I gotta do is get some measurements uh, of the width of the frame, uh, and then come up with a plan to shorten that air tank. So, let's go ahead and pull a, a measurement here uh, 23 and a half inches inside the frame. So probably gonna go ahead and make the tank 23 inches uh, just so I have a little bit of wiggle room on each side. <clears throat> All right, so this is my air tank. Uh, I don't remember where it came from, where I got it from. I've had it for quite a while. Um, I'm pretty sure it doesn't leak. I guess we'll find out. Uh, I gotta make it shorter because it's quite a bit too long uh, right now, I think 23 inches is a good thing to shoot for. Uh, I do need to take into account the curve on the end of the tank. Uh, so I need to figure out where I want to cut this. First off, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and make a cut. Uh, and I'm going to try to cut it right on this side of the, uh, the weld bead um, so that I can get rid of that. Uh, and then we're going to figure out where we need to move this end cap into uh, to make our, our tank length. And hopefully uh, I can do this with only making one new weld seam in this whole tank instead of having to shorten both ends. Uh, we're just gonna try to shorten one end. And uh, the reason I wanna do this particular end uh, is because this end has a port in the bottom that I can use as a drain. And so um, what I wanna do is actually I'm gonna rotate this because uh, I want these uh, I want these upper ports um, to be accessible, so I want to actually I'm gonna turn them to the side uh, so that I can get to them, but that puts this uh, drain port uh, horizontally and not at the lowest point in the tank. So uh, I'm gonna cut this one off, rotate it, uh, so that these are on the side at like the nine or three o'clock position, uh, and then I can put this back at the six o'clock uh, so that I have a drain if I ever need to drain moisture out of these air tanks. So. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make this first cut here. Uh, I'm just going to use my bandsaw. Hopefully it works well enough for me uh, and makes a pretty straight cut. So uh, we'll get this thing set up and we'll make our first cut.
All right, well, as you can see, I did have to finish that little bit of a cut up with the cutoff wheel. Um, this tank is like eight and a half inches. My bandsaw goes to like eight. Uh, so it's kind of a bummer, but it will something we can live with. So the end did get cut off pretty okay. I'm gonna have to clean it up a little bit, um, but we can still work with it. Um, so now we need to get our measurements and I said 23. Um, and we're gonna have to take into account the end of the tank here. So we're gonna measure from my speed square. Things kind of set up. So if I measure from the edge of that speed square, 23, oops, don't fall down, puts us right here. Now I need to take into account the thickness of that lid uh, and see if we can move it in. Hopefully it's not so far that we're either gonna be in here into this fitting, because if we're in this fitting, we're gonna just come in just a little bit further, which isn't that big of a deal. Um, if we have to, it's not gonna make that much of a difference in the length of the tank. So uh, let's get a idea. Well, I could just do this. So two inches is how wide that one is. So if I come in two inches from that one, it, <laughs> it puts us directly in the middle of that fitting. So we're gonna come in and just go inside of that fitting uh, and make our next cut. So it reduces us down, but we've still got one on either end. Uh, I think we've still got plenty of places for uh, air fittings in this thing. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and come in and make it a 20 inch tank instead of a 23 inch tank uh, and go ahead and make a cut right there. Well, again, we're gonna go ahead and start on the bandsaw um, and then we'll finish with the cutoff wheel. Uh, it just wakes, makes way more sense than trying to line this thing out and make the whole cut with a cutoff wheel. Uh, the bandsaw does a decent enough job that I think it's not gonna be that big of a deal to put this thing back together. Well, you can see I got the tank put together. Uh, fortunately, the end cap is actually a little bit slightly smaller uh, than the diameter of the tank. Uh, so the cap's actually made to fit in uh, side, which makes the welding this a lot easier. I don't have to do just like a butt weld. Um, so next thing, I'm gonna go ahead and get this. I'm gonna double check my measurements, make sure it's good uh, before I go ahead and final weld it. But then I'll uh, figure out a way to weld this. I'm trying to figure out a way to rotate it while I'm welding it just so I can make the welds as nice as I can. Uh, if I can't do that, uh, I don't think it'll matter that much. But uh, anyway, we'll go ahead and get this sucker welded up, uh, maybe throw some paint on it, and then we're gonna be looking at how we're gonna mount it back in the Bronco. Flipped it in a double. Mm -hmm. Said I'm a kid, we gotta go, go. Take one, then I die. 
dash away from Popo. Yeah. Snakes around my grass, they want my dodo. But I keep a 40, they don't know, no. Got the handy, you get cold, cold. Smoke on Reggie, that's a no, no. Driving slow mo in the photo. Bitches ready for them photos. There's a lot of things on my mind, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stacking money like 365. Take the team, we gon' be hot, hot like steam. I just got the dreams, I don't know what you mean. It's all funny to the feet, I get 50 to my cheek. Tank's all welded, uh, and I put some fittings in, and I put a pressure gauge in so that I can do some leak testing. I've got a little Schrader valve down there. Uh, I also have some just some basic leak detection, soap, purpose, fluid, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but we're going to put some pressure in this thing, uh, kind of keep an eye on that gauge. It's not really the best gauge because it's uh, like 0 to 30 on the first step there, but um, put some pressure in it. We'll go ahead and leak test it, see if we can hopefully not have any leaks, which would be kind of amazing on the first shot. Well, according to both gauges, it's reading 30 PSI, so let's go ahead and let it sit. And we'll go ahead and put some of our leak detecting liquid on there and see if we get any air bubbles. And the gauge isn't plummeting, so and I don't hear any leaks, so I guess it's a good sign we don't have any major leaks. We might have a few little tiny bubbles, but let's see, I see a couple of pinholes, but no air bubbles. Oh, there's one. Look at that. Right there. Little tiny pinhole. Put a mark there. And it's right at the junction of a tack weld and a, where I came together. Normally I would have ground those out and tried to weld over top of them. What I'll have to do is kind of feather that out, uh, start the weld here, and then weld across that whole gap without stopping and restarting. Let's see, let's continue around, see if we can find any other ones. Oop, there's one. Another one I'll have to tackle. Is it just gonna be those two? That's what it looks like. So I got a couple of little leaks to fix. Thought I just saw another one, but I guess not. Well, not too bad for Probably not being as clean as it should have been. That's a pretty good one. All right, well, we'll go ahead and let this, we'll let the air out. We're gonna go ahead and uh, see if we can fix those leaks and then we'll check it again. Flipped it in a double 
all pretty well mounted in there um, I kind of whoops I kind of didn't want to get too crazy with the mount but I wanted it to be nice and strong you can see I just took a piece of eighth inch strap uh, notched it so it fits the tank so I will weld this here and then these will get welded uh, this piece of angle iron will get welded into the into the frame it's come out pretty good I'm pretty pleased with it it's as far back as I feel comfortable, I wanted to have some space between the, the back of the bumper or the, the bumper right there, or the frame. Um, so there's about a half inch or so. Uh, I believe it's clearing, the, the rear differential will clear uh, under full compression. Uh, and the nice thing is this, this tank does not hang below uh, the rear bumper. So uh, it should be pretty well protected under there. Uh, looks like I can get to all the side fittings pretty easily. Uh, and obviously the front ones. Uh, so now it's all tacked in there, we're gonna go ahead and pull it back out. Uh, do some protecting, covering some things up, try not to get too many uh, sparks all over stuff. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and weld the, the mounts into place, weld the mounts on the, the tank. Uh, go ahead and throw some paint on stuff and then put it back in. Uh, and then we're ready to start doing some plumbing. <laughs> Too much 
Hey. Well, air system's all plumbed, and I went ahead and put in an additional uh, connection here, along with an air gauge. Uh, it's reading about 30 PSI, 35, 40, somewhere in that range right now. Uh, I do have it lightly pressurized just to see. Uh, there Apparently there are no major air leaks. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some minor ones. Uh, you might notice that uh, originally I'd put the fittings in here. Um, the, they were, the tank is not quite narrow enough to fit in between the frame rails with the fittings there. So uh, both my airlines are down here on the back side, which I did flip the tank around. Uh, I just thought I'll put those where they're a little bit more protected uh, and hope they survive a little bit longer. I just used some of this, this is hard plastic airline like they use in like semi trucks and stuff like that. So it's pretty thick, pretty uh, uh, durable, hopefully. Uh, has a pretty good pressure rating on it as well. If I recall correctly, the ARB compressor puts out like 150 PSI. So hopefully everything in this system uh, will hold up to that. I don't, I, I, was, I was thinking, I don't think I'm gonna leave it uh, pressurized over long periods of time. I think that's just asking for problems. Uh, probably leave a little bit of pressure in it, uh, but not like the full 150. So the idea is um, I don't want to run my ARB compressor all the time to generate a bunch of volume, like if I wanted to air up tires or something like that. Uh, so the hope is that this air tank would survive and last for quite a while out on the trail, uh, and that if I did want to run air tools or uh, air up tires, uh, I can do it off of this air tank. Uh, I have not done the math uh, to figure out the volume of this tank. Uh, it's not too bad. You just take the radius of the, or the diameter of the tank. Well, you take the area of the tank uh, times the height and that'll give you the um, square inches of the tank or cubic inches of the tank and then you uh, convert that into gallons. You should be able to figure that out fairly straightforward. I just don't can't do the math off the top of my head right now. What's the, what's the area is like 2 pi r or pi times the diameter. I forget, one of those is the circumference and one's the area. So I'll have to go look those up um, and we'll figure it out. We'll see, see if we can get an idea of what the volume is. I'll put it right here once I figure it out. <coughs> uh, so anyway, uh, I think that's gonna wrap up this video for this build, this addition to the, the Bronco here. Uh, I just gotta put the panels back in. Uh, I'm hoping, fingers crossed-ish, uh, that my new rear shocks will be here in the next few days. Uh, my new front coils just arrived. I haven't even got them out of the box yet, um, but we should be able to get this thing. I still gotta get the rear drive shaft re-lengthened, re-lengthened, re-tubed, um, cause I can't, there's no drive shaft stretchers out there. So anyway, we'll pick this up next time on Fabrication 101. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Leave me a comment down below if you're curious about anything about this Bronco. Uh, and we will see you guys on the next uh, episode of Fabrication 101. In the meantime, do me a favor, do yourself a favor, and go build something.